Hello and how are you? My name is Mahim Dombak and I will come to our 26th lecture of creating an inventory management system. So we always do for 10 minutes, so I'll start our timer without waiting any minute. Alright, so in the previous lecture, we stopped at the level where we could log in, I mean we could allow, we could, we, someone could be able to create their account and uh, log, in, log them in automatically so we finish this screen now in this lecture we're going to work on uh, someone uh, being able to log in let's say that someone is coming back and then they should be able to log in like being for them to, to log in that's what i'm going to do so in the previous lecture if you still remember we stopped at this level whereby we created just a login screen so right now we are going to now do the logic of uh, allowing someone to enter their email and their password we check if these are true and then uh, we do what we log them in that's what we are going to do right now so without wasting any minute our counter has already started counting let's go straight into our today's business so as uh, you can see i've already opened the project and i've run the code and uh, i've opened this login screen so if you watched up to the previous lecture you'll be able to see this screen okay so let me come to the screen uh, it is uh, here login screen so in this login screen it was a duplicate of registration screen and you just removed unnecessary things so right now we're going to do the logic of collecting the username and password and then submit them online so you can be able to fetch the the, the credential i mean you can be able to submit, submit you submit them online so you can be able to log in someone so let's go ahead and uh, look into this so we can just simply come to this button of what of uh, submit okay where is it uh it is here Is this one so I'm looking for it I'm looking for the login button I think it is this is the already have an account so we're going to put here don't have an account create account so we shall come to this okay let's first focus on the work so this is if there's an error so if this is the the button of, of login okay so we can even change it sign in okay sign in something like that so this is the, the button so when you click on the login it calls the validate form okay so it checks if uh, the so here it just maintain the same mode it doesn't matter uh, so you check here if the email is free we just say the email is empty if the password is empty say the email is a uh, the password is empty and return back the user so if these are not empty we call back this we call now this submit button okay so this submit button it shows the loader and then here we create our responsive uh, variable that is going to have null and then here we go ahead and send the uh, the email okay and the password so we get back the response so this is the place where we stopped at in the previous lecture okay so we are, good. we are going now to stop from we are going to start from here so here say so maybe you can say request and okay so at this point this is the thing so when we, when we get back the request okay so we hide the what we hide the loader so after hiding the loader we check if the response is null we go ahead and say that uh, the error occurred so we check if the data is null we go ahead and say it failed to do what to log in user so you can just simply say fail to uh to log login user because then we get what is in the in the response message status if the data is null okay so if the data is not null we go ahead and check if the response type is a map okay we check if the response type is a map at this level so if it is not a map we go ahead and say it has failed to pass okay so after doing that the next thing we're going to go ahead and check if the code that has been sent back is zero is one so if it is not one in this data we go ahead and represent the message okay and then return back then after we go ahead and pass the user who is logged in okay so we pass the 
data of the user by just simply say login dot user login user dot from and then you pass the user that has come through the data in the user variable i hope that's what is in the in our response so if it fails we go ahead and say it failed and uh, try to log in with your credentials so if it this one indicates it fails okay so if maybe the id is zero so you just say that it has failed okay so if it if id is not zero we go ahead and the, get and get this the person who has logged in and we check if uh, the and i mean we go ahead and save this user okay so if this returns back something that is greater than zero then we know that there is a problem we just display that error okay so this must it might be an sql error so if it is successful we'll go ahead and say successful and then the color we make it what green and then you go to the main route so this login screen i think we also finished it just because i've spent long time without uh, touching these things so that's why i had forgotten but i think i believe in this video, previous video that we finished this login so let's go ahead and try to log in so i'll come here and provide uh the logins let me get here some logins of a user who already exists in the system uh for example this user so i'll go ahead and provide uh the username and then the password four three two one and then if i try to log in you can see invalid i mean email is invalid okay so here we need the valid emails <laughs> we need the valid email we need the valid email i don't i don't remember when the email that i used okay i don't remember the email that i used at the beginning uh let me get it here here so i know here i can get the person who is logged in so i can just simply put here email Okay, so the email is john at gmail.com so if i come here and put john at gmail.com then i put 4321 and i try to log in you can see the password is correct and i've been logged in successfully so i believe you can pause this video and then you watch and make sure that you're on the same level with us otherwise up to the previous video we were able to reach at this level okay so i was just doing a recap so right now uh, we have we, someone can log in, someone can register and create their account. So that is a very good progress. Now we proceed to the next steps. So as you know, we always uh, follow our project. So we're going to begin by creating the financial periods. Okay, the financial period. So we're going to begin from the bottom here, and we come and we come until we reach at the very last point. So begin at the financial uh, period. Okay, so. We want a user when they log in they should be able to create the financial periods okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to put here a tab for creating a financial period you should be able to create a financial period you should be able to list them and you should be able to to do what uh to edit and maybe delete okay maybe you don't allow delete okay for financial period so let's go ahead and do that okay so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to come here to a project so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create uh, here a screen that is going to handle financial periods, okay? So I'll just simply come here and create a new uh, folder in the screens, new directory. I'm going to call it financial period easy, like this, financial periods. So it's a place where we're going to put all the things for financial period. So we're going to begin with the list, like a list of financial periods, okay? Let's come here and say new uh, stateful widget. So I can just simply come and say new file, and then I, I call it fina, uh, financial period list. Okay, I can say financial periods. So when I say S, I know that is plural. Financial periods screen. Okay. Or can say maybe financial period list okay so just for me when i put s i mean many and when i put one i mean now it's a single screen so let me just put s so financial period z screen dot that okay so that is our our list so we're going to put a list of financial periods there so after doing that the next thing we're going now to do stateful 
and then put their financial periods then i can come here and uh, import and then i can come and remove this one here and then here we shall have our list of what of financial periods let me first disable uh copilot okay so after doing that let's go ahead and now link this with the uh, the main menu so i'll come back to our main route or the main menu so in this main menu i'm going to put just um, another option that i'm going to call financial periods okay financial period is screen like this so i may remove this subtitle i don't need it okay so i don't need it so now i want when someone click there they should be taken to financial period screen like this so if someone clicks here like maybe i can put a divider just separate it no problem okay someone now when they click here they should be able to go to financial periods so you can give this divider height of zero okay so when someone click here they should go to the list of financial periods so when i click here financial period screen it is there and you can see the screen is what is empty so let's go ahead and put there uh sorry let's go ahead and to go to financial periods and then we put there our scaffold so come here and put what uh scaffold okay scaffold return scaffold like this and then it's going to have a title so it's going to have a what it's going to have a uh, title it's going to have body so can say maybe text and say list of 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 financial periods okay so you shall have a list of financial period so you can surround this one in the safe area okay so it can be there on top and then can put here title okay just bring back a pilot okay so you can put here is it ah sorry up bar not title <laughs> Up bar, so we're going to put the up bar and give it title of financial periods as you can see there all right so there we go so after doing that uh the next thing that we're going to do now you see here we have financial periods you can go back to all list here you have a list of financial periods all right so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do now we're going to go ahead and give now maybe a plus button here for creating a new financial period so you can just simply come in here and put um, a floating button and come and put um, a plus so this plus is going to be for creating what financial periods like this so we can okay we can format these things later i'll show you how to format them so i want when someone click there we should take them to the screen for creating a what a new financial period when someone click on this plus okay so let's go ahead and create now that screen for creating a financial period okay so we should be able now to create a financial period so what i'm going to do i'm going to come here and then we go ahead and create a new uh file new file new file that i'm going to call financial period create screen okay so you see financial period create screen so they are related they're in the same folder and the names are just almost similar so you can they you can have like a well organized project that cannot confuse you then i put dot that now after doing that i come here and make a stateless widget okay stateless widget and i put what financial period create screen sorry stateful widget put there financial period create screen come and import this okay uh -huh. now come and remove this one all right all right so i can come here and put our scaffold 
okay <laughs> so copilot uh, so now let's go ahead now when someone clicks on the create financial period you should take they should bring it to this screen okay so let's come here to the um, to the what to the to the financial period list so once when someone click on this plus we should just simply do get dot two get dot two and then put uh, financial periods create screen okay now when someone clicks here they should be taken to this so when someone clicks here they are taken to the create screen so this is a place where someone's going to enter the financial period when it starts and when it's end and then they should be able to save okay so copilot has already done it for me but me i'm going to dismantle it and we do it together so this is a financial period screen create screen so the first thing that i'm going to do we are going to need a model for financial period so you should watch this very carefully so that you understand the main source of where where, where now the whole business starts from so we're going to create a model for financial period so that when we are controlling this form, we are controlling it in one centralized what? Centralized object or one object like this. So it means that we are going to need a model for financial periods. So I'll come here. I believe we already have a folder of models, which is this one here. So I'm going to create another model for what? For financial period. It is going to look much more like uh, this one that we've already created. We created this of uh, what? of uh, of uh, logged in user so this logged in user model it is having almost everything that we need okay apart from uh, the logic of fetching data from internet and bring it back to what to to the local machine but without let, let, let us just create this one again as the second time so we can again relearn it and understand so the first thing that we're going to do we are going to create the model itself so i'll come here to our models okay and just right click and say new and then say uh file and then i'm going to call this one what i'm going to call it financial 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 what financial period period financial period what financial period so i'm going to maybe financial period model dot that Dot that okay so that is our financial period model now the first thing that we're going to do we're going to make it a class so you should watch this very carefully so i'm going to make it a class of financial period okay so there it is i believe everyone can do this so after doing that let me first disable this copilot okay so after doing that now I already have here something that I'm benchmarking from so it can save our time. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to create two, two main constants. The first constant is going to be the end point where we shall be fetching the data. And then the second constant is going to be the table where we are going to be we are, where we are going to be doing what where we're going to be saving the records okay or the local table so i'm going to do those two uh main what main uh main uh main what main uh main uh constants so I'm going to be static uh static string Okay, so the first one I said is going to be the end point. So I'm going to put here maybe end, end point. So it's going to be the API end point. Okay, so where is the API? So this one will need to go, will need us to go to the what? To our API, if you still remember the API that we created. So this is the API. So let's just go ahead and check the end point of the financial model API. So this is the one. Okay, this is the API. What is the financial model? What is the financial model? Financial, financial period, it is here. So uh, we have uh, for create, we have for edit, and then we have for list. So all of them, they are having the same end point, 
okay which is having stroke period stroke period stroke period something like this okay so you are going also to do the same like that okay so it is api stroke period so that is the endpoint where uh what where um okay that is the api where our financial periods we shall be sending the the information okay so to do that so we shall just simply come and put your endpoint it is api financial period so that is the main endpoint okay so if this api of course this api can change anytime so you can just maintain financial period okay so uh you've seen that okay because this is what we did last time now after doing that now the next thing is to create now a table where do you want to be saving uh these financial periods okay so it would be better if you maintain the same table as how it is online okay so i can as well just keep it like this and say table so i have now the table i have now the financial i mean i have the endpoint and the fine and the table we are going to be saving these things offline so after doing that now the next thing that we're going to do now we're going now to create the variables that are in that financial period so to get this variable correctly it's better to come to the database okay and then come to the to the financial period uh table okay which is this one and then come and copy the what and come and copy these um this what these table names so you, you shouldn't make mistakes okay so i'll come and get those ones here and come and put them here okay so uh this first one we know it's always an id so i can put here int id and make it zero by default okay so this one's going to be a string okay so uh this one updated that if you want it also you can put there company id come and put it there and then the name and then the date the start date and then the end date and then the status and then the description and then the total investment and then the total sales and then the profits and then the total expenses so the rest are, is only this one is an integer and then the rest are what are uh, strings now after doing that after doing that uh the next thing we are going to see how we can at least okay we'll just have, let us first have our first uh function uh of of okay the function that is going to work on uh, converting this thing uh to json that is very important function you know that you're going to need it that is going to convert to json okay you're going to need that one so much okay so let's go ahead and do that So I can just simply put to JSON, we create to JSON, open bracket, and then we return a what? We return a curl bracket. So we are going to do all these things and put them to JSON. So I'm going to show you now how we are going to automate this one. But hang in there, I'll show you. So I'll put here ID. You see how it is tire somewhere. So ID, I put ID put created that you know i'm going to need this okay and then i put uh, updated that company id the name of the financial period then the start date the end date mm -hmm. 
Les tetas. The description. The data investment. Data sales. Data profit. And then data expenses. Alright. Yeah, at least uh, we now have the financial period with its tables, with its variables, and then to JSON. I think uh, this can be enough for us to first create the form. So let's go ahead and create the form. Then after creating the form, uh, we go ahead and uh, and uh, and submit it. So if it can submit and submit it successfully, then we shall come back and see now how we can fetch it from internet and display this uh, on the what on the on the machine. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, okay. So let's go back now. So I've created at least our, our model, our basic model. But we shall come back to it. Okay. Now let's go back to um, basic model. Is it? Uh -huh. Now we are going to come to financial period. What financial period? The uh, create screen. Okay. This is it. Okay. Let me just remove this thing that Copilot has added. So it is see that it is a free screen. So what we're going to do, uh, I just said as I told you, I have a lot of techniques that I want to share with you in these videos. So I know sometimes someone will need to edit. Okay, sometimes with someone will need to edit using the same form. So instead, uh, in avo to avoid creating multiple forms, so what you do, you come and make this uh, create screen, whatever create screen that you're going to make. You make it always receive an object of uh, which uh, which what which 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 class it's meant for for example this is meant for modifying and managing the what the financial periods so let us always receive here so you come here on top let us always receive here maybe you can say maybe item something like that main item that is going to be a financial period so for someone to call this one at least they must provide a financial period so gum can put here this and then put financial period in the in the constructor. So what does it mean? It means that someone will not come to this screen if they don't do what? If they don't provide a financial period. Okay. So that's going to be a must like a prerequisite. For someone to call this screen, they must provide a financial what? A financial period object. So it means that even someone who is creating, let's say someone is creating uh, so when someone is editing, it means that you have to provide a financial period. When someone is creating, how to financial. So if it is editing, it will come with its data, we shall just display the data. So that is a very great logic that you may need in order to do what? To simplify that, to optimize the create and update logic. So it means that this, since we are expecting now an item here, so it means that if we come behind, it will be crying, it will be giving a warning here. Okay? So what I'm going to put here, I'm just going to create just a new object so this is creating so you see when i'm creating i just put here go to this financial screen and then i create a new object okay new object of financial period so it it, it we then this one will always receive a what a financial period so you see that's why I'm, I'm giving it what a new object in that we used to put new but they say this is useless we can get rid of it so uh now when someone clicks on this class it will go with the record itself as a new record like this okay so now it means that um sometime it will be editing eh? so if you want to make sure that it's editing so i can just simply come and i can just okay we shall come to that okay let's 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 come to that later so you see now we have the object i mean the object here in the main that is coming from the previous screen so it can be an object with the data or it can be an object without data something like that now we proceed uh, now uh we now go ahead and create now the form itself okay so to create the form uh to create the form what i'm going to do uh we're going to need to use form builder i don't know whether i already i've already added form builder in this 
in this project i believe i have oh my god i haven't okay okay so we're going to add a package called form builder it helps us to manage the forms with simplicity so let's go ahead and add that package so i'll come here to our project i mean so i'll come here to google and search flutter form builder this one here so you'll find this uh, popular package on top here and then you'll see it helps on validation it helps on many things and building the project all right so this is the form that we're going to be using okay the form bit that we're going to be using so let's go ahead and import it okay so to import it install come to install then they say that we'll just run this command if you cannot manage to run the command you can just add this one in your dependencies okay so i'm going to run this command so it can come in my project okay so let's go ahead and do that so come to a project here and then come here to terminal and then i clean everything and then i paste there from builder and i press enter so it's going to import so as it is importing it has another thing called uh form validator form validator can help us to validate things okay can help us to validate things with simplicity so let's search also for format validator okay so it has successfully imported so it has imported it all right let's go ahead and add also form builder validator just search form builder the same and add word validator so you'll see so they move hand in hand so i'll copy this one and i install it as well i hope it's going to work because sometimes it disturbs so i paste all right so that's our form builder validator it's already there now let me restart the app to make sure that it is okay. it is well installed i stop and run it again uh -huh. now let's come to form build and you see how it, it works flutter form builder and then come here to example okay so here i go um financial periods click on plus we have uh create financial period okay so in this financial period we're going to come here and put a what and put a single child scroll view okay that's going to have a padding of edge inset dot symmetric and make it uh, horizontal of maybe 15 or maybe 20 20 can be enough okay and then we're going to give it a what a child sorry child which is going to be a what a column okay now this form builder we are supposed to wrap it in the whole form okay it has a widget that we must wrap in the what in the whole form which we call uh or is it The examples are not here.
No, I think I can use this one. I also don't know them in the head of RAM. So, so every every wire your form is going to be, you have to wrap it uh, inside the screen. I mean, sorry, inside the um, the form builder itself. You can wrap this. You can wrap it from here. You can make it as the main child here, or you can make it here. It's just up to you. So let's put it here, and then I come in this in this column. I surround it with what, with uh, maybe container, and then instead of container, I just put form builder. This one, and I point it. So what I'm putting it, it ha you have to give it a key. Okay, so you have to give it a key, so you can do that. You can use that key to control it. So come and give here a key. So I can just say form key. So this form key, you have to create it. It's a variable. So you come on top here, 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 on top of override. Okay, and then put final, and then say form key, or you can call it anything. Form key, and then say global key, and then pass here form builder state, and then open square bracket like this. I mean, curl bracket, bracket like this, and then uh, you put a semicolon. So that's how you create a key. A global key for what for form builder then come and uh, pass it here uh, so it can be the, the main parent of this column so in this uh, this column you can now put your what your form uh, your format your form uh, widgets for example let's go to our financial model and determine which things that we need to create okay so let me copy them here okay at least at least let me come here and we see with things that we're going to create so this here we are here we are so let me create here some just comment section and then i put uh the, these fields and we determine which one you're going to create which one you're going to get rid of or you can just simply come here to the to your web and see which ones that you need to create when you're creating a form a, a for a financial period we need the name we need the start period and then the end period and then the status whether so it's active or not active and then the description so let's determine them here we need so this company id it will go to field we need the name we need the start period and then i mean the start date the end date we need the status and the description these others are going to be generated so i can remove them there okay so let's go ahead and create now the fields of the name so we're going to go ahead and put here children so this form builder has what you call um has what you call form builder text okay form builder text field form builder text field just write as it is here and then import it so the first thing it must have a name you have to give it a name otherwise if you don't give it a name then it will not work so give it name and then here should be a string of course name so we are, we are beginning with this one eh? so the name of this is going to be a what a uh, name like this okay so when you save you'll have that what that uh, plain uh plain what uh plain ui which is just like that okay that collects things like that so you can design it in so many ways you want it to be rounded you want it to be what so to do that you can just simply come here and give it what you call um a uh, decoration sorry give it what you call decoration so come here to the next the name and it has a lot of input that you can give so you can come and put your decoration So there are so many decorations that you can uh, give to a form builder. So come here and put decoration. So in this decoration, now in this decoration, we'll take a name. Okay. So what should be, I mean, it will take a label. And then after the label, it can take other fields. So the label is what is going to be displayed on the what? On the main screen. So you can give it border. So if you make it border outline, it's going to be having that kind of border. So let me come on top and give it a sized, sized what, size box, and give it height of maybe five. Okay, so height of fifteen. So that can become your simple what, your simple decoration. So if you remove this border, it will be like this. So if you give it border, it will have like that one. Okay. So in this border, you can also pass the, a lot of things. For example, the border radius. 
if you want it to be like kind of rounded you can pass maybe uh the, the padding okay of the content something like that so all those things you can do what you can be able to pass them now let's say that we just need our simple uh input to be like this okay so you can just simply put border outline and then we, we just leave it as simple as that okay so after doing that now the next thing that we're going to do uh is now to to to, to put the other input okay to put the other input so we have this so if you want to put the initial data like if someone opens it it should come with the data by default so you can just simply put here and say initial value and then we're going to now reference something that we collected from this side so you have to put a widget item and then the name so this can be enough for us so if you want you can go ahead and put now the validator so when you put the validator you have to import this validator so you just put form builder validator and then say dot compose so you can say form builder then validator then say dot require so to make this one require to be required you can put maybe like uh, you can go ahead and put for example let's say that you don't need a, a name to be having uh, more less than three liters so you can put your mean length to be three and then you can also maybe go ahead and put the average uh, maximum length okay so you see how validated it is very simple maximum length to be 100 you can go ahead and add so many validators as much as you want i mean validations in here so that is how you validate so this is a you see how it is very simple to create a what a form builder so you can be able to collect uh the value every time something changes okay so but it's just simply saying unchanged and then you you receive it like this okay so you say unchanged and then you say string put question mark if you want to turn into string and then you say value value and then you say widget dot item is got name dot name is equal to value if it's not null okay so like this so that is how you can uh, collect every time something changes to go ahead and collect it and put it in here in here so uh that's it uh our 40 minutes are over uh we shall start from there in the next lecture we are going now to collect this data and then after finishing to collect this data we go ahead and now see how you submit the, 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 the object to the internet and then after we see how we fetch it and then present it in the list so that is what we shall cover in the next uh, lecture but i hope you're going to practice and make sure that you understand everything that i've explained here you can even try to practice ahead but in the next lecture we're going to start from here exactly and then you see how we can be able to successfully create this uh, financial period without any what, without any challenge. All right, that's it for today. Uh, we we'll meet in the next in the next lecture, and make sure that you don't miss. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can always uh, stay updated uh, with our daily trainings. Goodbye. See you in the next lecture.